What's up Magical Misfits, Drew here. And I had a completely different video planned for today, but you know, these things happen. I have great resistance even now <laughs> to talking about my matron on my channel because I, I really genuinely feel that there are gonna be people in the community and I'm not actually talking about other content creators as much as I'm talking about just the larger uh, community at whole. There are going to be people who probably are going to have a problem with it. And while I feel that's really unfortunate, I don't really, I don't really care about that, but I don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to deal with it. My concern is that there could be backlash and I don't want to deal with backlash. <laughs> who wants to deal with that? Who wants a bunch of negativity coming at them? Nobody. <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> My matron has been pushing me for some time now to be very open, honest, transparent about who she is, our relationship and my path and practice as it stands. Now, it is in evolution, so, you know, it continues to change and it probably will for some time since I am just baby stepping my way into all this. But I have resisted. And when I say that she has been pushing me, this is through um, like cards, which are part of my daily practice at the moment, through meditation, through now outside forces. There are things going on around me that are, again, reinforcing this idea that this is what I need to do. And the last straw came today, again, with a card. And it was just a card I've gotten a million times and I thought was about one thing. And then I thought it was about another thing. And like, <laughs> every time I think I've got it figured out um, today, it was very clear to me that this card was, again, a push. I'm being given an opportunity to stand in my power. And so I'm going to take it. The way that I view the topic shifted today, I didn't really understand, obviously, why this goddess had come into my life. And I'm sure that it's more complicated than where I've gotten right now. But I was just kind of groping around in the dark for a long time, but it has become very apparent to me just in the past week or two. Yeah, that a huge part of why she is here in my life at this time is to bring balance into my life to help me find a balanced place and for integration there is a lot of inner work going on i've gotten very contemplative and i've gotten very comfortable in the detached observer or i'm getting comfortable i should say in the detached observer state so and it's all happening pretty naturally, actually. Something will come up that I have resistance to or I feel uncomfortable with or it could even be triggering, um, if you want to use an extreme term. And I'll feel that, but almost immediately I will take a step back and take a deep breath and I will start asking myself questions um, to get to the bottom. Why do I feel this way? What is making me feel this way? What is What am I reacting to? And digging deeper into that in that moment and coming to the place where I realize, okay, this shadow just got poked. So this is something I need to work on. And then not taking what doesn't belong to me, letting that lie with whomever, like that's your stuff. Thank you for poking my shadow and making me aware of my shadow, but I'm not taking any of your part of it. You can, you can keep that. And, and I'm fine. I'm good. I'm no longer upset, uncomfortable, triggered, whatever it was. I no longer feel that way. I am taking every opportunity that's presented to me for growth and for deeper understanding of myself essentially is how I feel. And that's part of what she's doing with me. And so I've told myself that that's how I'm going to handle this situation. Um, my channel is still, I mean, it's not a huge channel, so, you know, whatever. But if I do get any sort of uncomfortable reactions from people, things that are negative in nature or even worse than that. I am going to take that as an opportunity to dig deeper into myself and I'm not going to take their negativity. I, d I do not have to carry your negativity and I won't. <laughs> it's not mine. Um, I will take the gift that you are giving me. 
of looking deeper at myself and why I have a reaction if I do. Uh, I have learned judgment is the, judgment is the issue. Feeling judged myself and judging others both. This is my big shadow that I'm, I need to work on right now. Not that I've never done any work on that shadow, but um, obviously I'm far from done, which is fine. So if I get backlash, I'm going to do my best to um, meet that with love and gratitude as an opportunity for further self-development and growth. And I'm also going to take that attitude toward them. Um, you know, if someone is upset by my own personal path and practice that has absolutely nothing to do with anyone but me, then obviously I am presenting them with an opportunity to dive deeper into themselves and figure out why and to grow and to um, become a more whole integrated individual as well. Whether they take it or not, that's that's up to them. But that this is the way I'm choosing to look at this because that's the kind of person that I want to be, right? I don't want to be reactive. I am not making this video to trigger people, to upset people, to get any kind of reaction out of anyone. Honestly, I'm, I'm simply doing what I feel guided to do and to be more transparent with my own path and practice. I feel like it's a bit of a test that my goddess is saying, I am here behind you. I've got you. And if you really trust in me and we're in this together, then you'll take this step forward and you will put your faith in me. You will surrender. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so let's sort of start at the beginning, right? I would say at the end of, in the fall of 2018 is when all of this probably began on a conscious level for me. Okay. It definitely started before that. <laughs> But I was not conscious of it, that anything was going on until around the fall of 2018. And for me, I had this sensation, the, the, the way it unfolded, my immediate reaction was, oh, I've got a new guide coming in. Um, I'm going to use the word energy because I don't have another, like, it, it's just a word that works. I became aware of an energy that was observing me and it was standing very far from me, but making its presence known to me. When I say standing very far, it's because it literally feels like someone is standing 15 to 20 feet away from you watching you. That's the literal feeling of it. The last time I had experienced this was in 2010 when I, I experienced this happening and, and the way it played out was a new guide came in and part of that had to do with healing that I needed to do and also my mother's death and it was all connected. There was a lot going on there and that's how that guide presented. I became aware that someone was there checking me out and then there was this long lapse and I forgot about it and then suddenly... I, I say he because it's a masculine energy. He was there and he was communicating with me, guiding me and interacting with me very closely. So this is this was reminiscent of that. I'm like, oh, and a new guide must be coming in. I must be needing to work on something. OK. And then there was a lapse. This this probably went on for weeks as far as feeling the presence and being aware that I was being watched or observed. To me, it's like this little introduction like, hey, to be continued. <laughs> And honestly, I forgot all about it. Spring of 2019, a couple things happened. The first thing that happened is I kept feeling this real strong desire to build a shrine. And I needed a shrine, not an altar, a shrine. And this, when I say shrine, I mean it in the way of a devotional space for deity. Now I am in a very, at this time still, very shamanic mindset. So I'm, I'm like, Okay, I see in my mind, like I grew up in Japan, I see a little miniature Shinto shrine in my mind and I'm thinking a shrine for the spirits, the spirits of the land, the spirits. This is what I'm, I'm saying in my brain. Okay, fine. Okay, I can build a little shrine, have the offerings and okay, uh, this is totally bizarre, unusual, nothing I've ever experienced in the entire time that I've been practicing or um, consciously walking a pagan path. I am a pantheist at heart. Um, and while I have worked with different gods and goddesses 
it's just there's never been this real exclusive deep relationship with any of them even though there have been gods and goddesses gods in particular who have had profound effect in my life and i have a deep love respect and appreciation for i'm just still stuck in this very shamanic mindset and i'm like yeah spirits okay weird but we'll figure it out and i kind of just shuffle it to the back of the brain and move on also at this time in spring of 2019 i decided i wanted to make capet now, for those who don't know, um, Kapet is also referred to as Kifi. Um, Kapet is the Egyptian word and Kifi is the, I, I think, is it Greek or Roman Greek word? I decided I wanted to make this. And really the draw that I felt was this alchemical process of it. It's so cool, right? You have a certain amount of days, you work each ingredient for those days. What It's basically however many ingredients you have, it's that many days. And, and then there's this whole uh, steeping it in wine for a certain amount of time. And like, this, it's just a very alchemical process. And it's so cool. And I was very much all about it. I'm like, yes, I want to do that. <laughs> so I decided to do it. And um, I made a big batch. And I decided with like, uh, probably about a third, a fourth of the batch, I would make a big disc of capet. And at midsummer, I would do a ritual and throw it into the fire. Closer it came to midsummer, I began to realize that what I needed to do had to do with the shrine. There needed to be an introduction, a very formal introduction to what I, but again, I'm like the spirits. I'm leaving that very vague because I'm, again, it, for me, it was this shamanic idea of what this is. And so I do my ritual at midsummer and I do this very formal introduction, which I had never done anything like and throw the um, capet disc into the fire and it smells lovely and it's great. Okay. <laughs> Later, late summer, early fall, the lovely Trish at Beanbag Hagwag did a video where she showed her moon altar and I thought, oh, that's lovely. I want to do that. <laughs> we had just moved this kind of tall cabinet, uh, thin with like three drawers out into the living room. We had done some rearranging and it was just sitting there bare. Basically. Um, I think I had probably put tchotchkes. No, I had had the love altar on there before that I moved the love altar, which is more of a shrine also, but it's not a devotional thing. I don't actually do workings at the love altar. So technically it's a shrine. I'd moved that and I cleaned it up and I decided to make the moon altar there. And so I'm setting up this moon altar and I'm setting up this big, we have this moonstone orb that actually has what looks like moon phases on it. It's so cool. It's a natural occurrence. Um, in a future video, I'll show you it. Squirreling. <laughs> I'm totally getting off topic. Okay. Um, I'm setting that up in particular and all of a sudden, I know it's a goddess. It's not a guide. It's a goddess that's coming. And I literally stopped what I was doing and just stood there for a moment because first off, I had completely forgotten about the whole guide thing consciously. And then a, a goddess. I mean, I've worked with gods and goddesses. I, I just mentioned I have, but this felt very different. It was, it was weird. It was weird. And so I'm just like, okay. So I start talking about this with friends who are also witches. And I'm trying to decide how I should go about figuring out who this goddess is and get to work. Cause I think I'm still, I was aware that this was different, that something was very different happening right now, but it was also, I, I don't know, not, I won't say I was in denial, but I was just kind of oblivious. <laughs> so I was still kind of thinking, you know, this may just be, uh, similar to the situations that I've had in the past with deity. So I'm talking to my friends and I'm like, how would you go about this? And Erica, formerly of raw spirit said she would do a tarot reading. And I'm like, okay, how would you do that? Would you just take like a goddess deck and pick a card or would you do like a legit reading? And she was like, no, I would do an actual reading. And I'm like, Ooh, okay. Um, she's lovely and she's my friend. So she's like, I'll help you with this. So we sat down and uh, she did a reading for me. And honestly, I have notes on it. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video, but it was kind of convoluted. And the only thing I kept getting from it was balance was the message I was receiving because each and every seemingly opposing, you know, exact opposite ideal was being laid out in front of me <laughs> in this reading. I'm just like, um, 
<laughs> so she's everything like I don't know it didn't <laughs> it didn't help narrow it down let's put it that way there was no one strand to pull right to follow and to try to figure out who this goddess was she said all right just for fun let's pull goddess card and she had two decks she had a goddess a dark goddess tarot deck i believe and then a goddess oracle and she said i'm gonna pull a card from each and let's see what happens so she shuffled and we're chatting while she's shuffling and talking and um i believe we were probably analyzing the reading that she had just done and she pulls the cards and sets them down and we take a second and um she flips them and they're the same they are the same goddess from each deck and she kind of laughs and she was like i just thought watch them be the same exact card the same goddess and i was like no i had the exact same thought <laughs> the goddess was aset also known as isis i refer to her as aset it is um i, I believe it's an older name but it, it to me isis has this negative connotation in this day and age and honestly, if you Google Isis and you don't put in goddess with it, you're only going to get terrorist information. So yes, I refer to her, to her as Aset. I actually refer to her husband and her son by other older names as well. I, I don't know that I'll do that with all of the gods. I don't even know. I don't know enough about the other gods. Uh, of course, all of her mythology is very steeped in her relationship with her husband and her son as well. So I have a lot more still very limited experience with those gods than any of the others um, per se. Now, again, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I never would have chosen her in a million years and not, it just never would have occurred to me to choose her. And honestly, I'm kind of obnoxious in that I probably wanted, would have wanted a more obscure goddess. I'm just like that. So I'm just kind of stunned and in shock and I don't really know what to do with this information. I have worked with gods and goddesses from the Egyptian pantheon before, uh, but never her. Toth, Anubis, and Nephilim at different times, but not extensively. I'm, I was always, you know, I think most people are kind of fascinated by Egypt, right? Ancient Egypt. But I used to be far more fascinated and interested in that kind of thing when I was younger, though I will say sacred geometry is huge to me. Um, and sacred geometry, of course, the flower of life is sort of the centerpiece. And this is a symbol that comes out of ancient Egypt and other cultures. But looking back in retrospect, there are all these little signposts and like, I can see how she was talking to me long before I realized it. At the very least, for the past eight years, she has been. And I just was completely oblivious and completely unaware. At any rate, that evening, I'm very skeptical about this whole thing. <laughs> I'm laying in my bed, you know, preparing myself to, you know, it takes me, I don't, I'm not one of those people that falls right asleep. It takes me a little while, but I'm laying there getting myself ready. And so I reach out and I say, okay, at the time, Isis, I, this is what happened today. And there is a goddess who is coming to me. And in this reading, I got indication that it was you. So if that's true, then I am open, wide, ready to receive you and work with you and to move forward with this next leg of my journey. And there was an immediate response. Her presence on top of me. And I got an extremely vivid sense of her of her energy her personality all of that like who she is and again i was shocked <laughs> i basically just thanked her and left it at that and i didn't i didn't know what to do i was walking around in a little weird cloud for a little while it only took me a few days a week or two at most before i switched out the moon altar and made it a shrine for Aset. The first way that I worked with her and made contact with her was on the astral. And um, I need to be doing more of that. But I also enjoy doing guided meditations um, that bring me into contact with her. I have a daily practice in which I, it entails several things, but part of it is working with cards 
receiving messages and guidance from her for the week, things I need to work on, that kind of thing, messages. And I greet her. It's pretty formal, the way that I greet her. It is very ritualistic. Um, I have a can, I keep candles for her and incense. I burn incense for her. She has offerings. There have been a great many things that have come out of this very short relationship that I've had with her. Now, originally I was very sort of bummed out because my only, like I've heard of Hekka, but I didn't know anything about it. And the only thing I know that refers to Egyptian at all is the Golden Dawn. And I very know very little about that, but I knew it was very ritualistic and that is so not my style. <laughs> I am intuitive and, you know, I'm a water baby, Pisces, like, you know, just I'm go with the flow and like feel it and like, oh, uh. so I was very disappointed and upset. But honestly, um, I have come to study Hekka more deeply. Um, I am certainly not an expert or authority on the topic at all, um, but I do have a a much better grasp of it than I did. And I understand that it is not the golden dawn. Uh, ancient Egyptian magic is not ceremonial magic. Not to say there's no, it, it's just, a, it's a different thing. I'm again, not going to get into that in this video because it'll get very long, but it's something that I can talk about to an extent in the future. Again, as a novice and a new person um, to it, my path and practice have changed drastically. The way that I practice magic, <laughs> It's very different today than it was several months ago. It has been slowly changing. I, and I, I expect it to continue to slowly evolve and change um, as I move forward. I do as I feel guided through intuition and interaction with Osset, as well as what I study, what feels right and comes into play. It is a very different animal. <laughs> Than anything I'm, uh, I have been used to. However, saying that, I don't know how much Hekka or comedic practices factor into this this shift. They, they, no, I don't know how much they factor into the integration, like what that's going to look like down the road. I'm looking at that now, and I, I don't feel like a dabbler. Um, I am really embracing it. It's really important. I'm doing everything I can to learn as much as I can and digest it out of respect and love for us set. Um, I don't, I don't know what I would do with that in the future. I'm in it right now. It may become like a huge part. I, I, who knows? Like, you know, five, 10 years from now, I, I could be all in and that could be my path and practice. Um, but maybe not. I, I genuinely don't know where it's going. Um, for me, it's about exploring who she is and um, what she has to offer me and the relationship that I have with her. If someone said to me, you worship Aset, that would not offend me or upset me at all, which is weird because uh, because of my negative connotations and associations with worship based on cultural norms and very negative experiences I've had with the dominating religion in my culture. The, I, that word made me like that concept made me uncomfortable and I didn't want and it, it. Not as even as like making my skin crawl as much as no, no, I don't worship. I don't want any part of it. It's not part of my life, my practice, my thought process, anything until very recently. And I remember I was doing my daily practice um, and I just it just dawned on me. Because uh, part of my daily practice is stretching uh, and practicing Sith. And I was doing that and it just dawned on me that what I'm doing with her is very akin to worship. And it didn't bother me at all. And I was surprised by that reaction. I am having, <laughs> I'm just having lots of, lots of surprises about who I am and um, where I'm going with my practice and my path and what that looks like and um, deep diving into my own personal psychology and emotional reactions. And it is a huge period of growth and healing for balance and integration in my life right now. And that is all thanks to Aset. <sighs> Again, back to the, the possibly uglier side of this. There may be people who are upset. I'm some white lady uh, from North America who 
and I, I genuinely feel that that's unfortunate because this for me is unexpected. It was unsolicited, <laughs> but I have learned that you roll with the punches, whatever happens, I go with it because if I don't, I'm shortchanging myself. My growth and development is connected, linked and the work, whatever that looks like, um, when it's presented to me and I have nothing but the deepest love and respect for Aset and for the culture that she emerged from. Uh, it's a little different because it is an ancient culture. Maybe people won't be as ups I don't, I don't know. I have seen, I've seen ugliness. I've heard about ugliness. Um, and so honestly, I thought maybe I'll, I would do a Patreon and just charge a dollar and talk about this sort of thing on there so that I only got people who really wanted to be there and weren't there just to troll or attack. But I just genuinely felt like that wasn't what I was being guided to do. That That's kind of a cop out. Because again, she she's made it very clear to me that this is sort of a test of how much I trust her and how much I believe in her and myself and where we're going together. I will say this, when I refer to her as my goddess, she obviously isn't mine, but she is mine and I am hers. She is, she is my mother. Mut aset. I don't even like the thought of not having her in my life is very upsetting. I don't even want to think about not having this relationship. It has had a profound effect on me and I will forever be grateful and in her debt and I'm actually getting emotional. I'm going to, I feel like I want to cry. <laughs> I love her more than I could ever express. And I'm extremely grateful. So yeah, um, I guess that's all I have to say for today. The, I will go further into this and show you things. Um, I have things that I've, I've started to make and um, even some things I've been gifted by lovely people. And um, I will show her shrine and my altar changed, although I'm not happy with it. it it's in flux. Um, some of my like, tools or what have you. And to talk, I'll, I'll definitely talk about her more in the future. Uh, so yeah, this is my relationship with Aset. Thank you so much for listening. And um, until next time, much love and gratitude.